It is my honor to welcome Dr. Freeman Ravowski III to receive the Doctor of Humane Letters degree. Freeman, you were born in Birmingham, Alabama, and graduated from Hampton Institute with highest honors in mathematics. You received a master's degree in mathematics and a doctorate in higher education administration statistics from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. A child leader in the civil rights movement, you were prominently featured in Spike Lee's 1997 documentary four little girls on the racially motivated bombing in 1963 of Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church. You have been president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County since 1992. You are also a consultant on science and math education and the author of numerous articles and books. You were named by President Obama to chair the President's Advisory Commission on Educational Excellence for African Americans, and also chaired the National Academies Committee that produced the report, Expanding Underrepresented Minority Participation, America's Science and Technology Talent at the Crossroads in 2011. Named one of the 100 most influential people in the world, by Time Magazine in 2012. <laughs> and one of America's best leaders by U US News and World Report in 2008. You serve as a consultant to the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, the national academies, and universities and school systems nationwide. Freeman, for your significant and ongoing contributions, the University of Massachusetts Lowell is proud to confer upon you its highest honor, Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Massachusetts, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this afternoon's commencement speaker, Dr. Freeman Krabowski. William Carlos Williams once said that it, it is difficult to find news and poetry, and yet men and women die miserably every day because of a lack of what is found there. And so I begin with words from our beloved Maya Angelou, the late Maya Angelou, who wrote, lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, take it, this dream, into the palms of your hands. Mold it into the image of your most public self sculpted into the shape of your most private need. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face and say simply, very simply with hope, good afternoon. Good afternoon to the class of 2017. Good afternoon to the class of 2017. <laughs> Thank you.
When Chancellor Maloney told me that the faculty had voted to give me this honorary degree, I was very, very honored for many reasons, including the fact that we at UMBC think a great deal of your university. You are becoming one of the most talked about institutions in the country. And to the athletes in the room, you give us a very hard time on the court and in the fields, and we salute you for what you do. We are delighted to be working with you all the time. <laughs> But most important, this is an institution that reflects the best of America. And what I did that you will appreciate is to ask several of your student graduates today from Aaron and John and Charlene, Adesia, Solomon and Jose to be my kitchen cabinet. If you're in the room right now, and I think some of you are Aaron, John, Charlene, Adesia, Solomon and Jose, stand up for a minute, let people see who you are and give them a round of applause, would you? Now, this is what I want you to hear that your fellow classmates said. I said, what is it about this experience that you'd want me to say? And they said something that was particularly significant. They said, we are so proud that we had the best of faculty and staff because they really prepared us well. Give the faculty and staff another round of applause. And they talked about the wonderful facilities, Chancellor. I want you to know they said that you've got great facilities here from the lab to industrial applications. It's a big deal that it prepared them well. And then they talked about their dreams and what they're doing. And to hear John and Aaron saying that they've developed a company to provide low-cost prosthetics for children in developing countries. And to hear Charlene talking about making a dif difference as a nurse and then a nurse practitioner. And Adesia talking about social media and political journalism. And Solomon, whom you heard from earlier, talking about making a difference in the world. And finally, Jose, who will be going to Costa Rica with the Peace Corps. In all those cases, what I heard and what you are about to do will be about leading and serving. And so my message to you today, class of 2017, is that the way you think about yourselves, the language that you use, the way you interact with each other, the values that you hold will be so important, you become like the things you love. Now, I want you to know your story and to continue to think about how you got to today. You have in the room today so many people who have worked hard so that you could sit here today and tell your story because stories inspire. I've got a story to tell you, and I want you to think about two things today that you, if you don't remember anything else I said, it would be blueberry pie and bees, B-E-E-S, all right, here we go. So when I was a little kid in Birmingham, the two things I loved most were eating and doing mathematics. And I was getting fatter and smarter all the time. <laughs> and my mama kept trying to get me to eat the, the vegetables, the, the, the more healthy stuff. But my grandmother wanted me to be happy. And so my grandmother would make two blueberry pies for the family, one for the family and one for Freeman. And she put my sign there, name there, saying, for Freeman only, a, a whole blueberry pie. And I would sit down to do my math. And my grandmama would put a big piece of pie in front of me, and I would sit there eating that pie, and pie would be all over my face. And my mama would be so upset, and my grandmother kept saying, you just keep enjoying that pie, baby. Keep enjoying that pie. And listen, and I could savor the pie. Do you know, 50 years later, I can taste that pie? Because it was the good taste of the pie, but it was also that unconditional love. Well, today is your blueberry pie. Because if you think about it, you know you have been loved by family who worked so hard for you to be here today. The time will come in your lives when life will be tough. And you need to be able to remember the blueberry pie, to be able to say, but I've got people in my corner who can make a difference. And so the key today is to think about your story. And then number two, I want you to think about the lessons you've learned along the way that have helped you get to this point. How many of you in the audience, among the graduates, had some time over the last few years when you started to doubt yourself or you didn't know whether or not you'd graduate? Raise your hands. Exactly. Exactly. 
You know, some people talk about people graduating cum laude, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and thank you laude somehow, somehow. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you made it. You are a graduate. Give yourselves another round of applause. You made it. You made it. You're here. You're here. <laughs> And so this is your day. You know, on the one hand, you're worried, okay, will I be okay in the future? Is it gonna be okay? Stop that for a minute. Remember, there were times before when you were doubting. You're getting here. You made it here because you did the right things. All you need to do is to keep doing the things you've already learned, to have the integrity and the hard work and the grit, and any dream you set for yourself, any goal you have will be achieved. And the number one approach would be to ask good questions. You know, I.I. Robbie, the Nobel laureate in physics, said that when he was growing up in New York, all of his friends' mothers would ask them at the end of a school day, what'd you learn in school? He said, but not my Jewish mother. He said, my mother would say, Izzy, did you ask a good question today? I want you to think about every day asking the good questions about life, about your work, about helping other people, because the questions make all the difference in the world. I want you to end, as you listen to me, with two people from Massachusetts. One, Justice Brandeis, who said that the most important office in our land is that of citizen. If there's nothing else again that you think about, it is that you are preparing to be a, a good citizen because a citizen is someone who leads also through the values, through the seeking of the truth, through analyzing what people say, through and making sure that what you do is for the public good of helping other people. And the other person that I want you to think about, the bees. First of all, before the Massachusetts, the end story, the bees I mentioned, Samuel Beckett, who wasn't from Massachusetts, he actually was Irish. And he, he wrote in French. And he wrote a book in which the people are, are talking about bees and the dancing of the bees. When bees are dancing, graduates, they're communicating. And this is what he said. Somebody was studying the bees all of his life. He said, this is something I could study all my life and never understand. Because the more he studied the dancing of the bees, the more he could see how they were communicating. But the more he understood, the more he realized there was so much more to know. And there is the essence of education. That the more you get to know, the more you understand, the more you realize you're just opening that door to knowledge and wisdom. So remember the bees and remember the pie. And then I close with words from John Kennedy, a resident of this commonwealth, because we are in times when we must know what our values are. We must know who we are, and you as the next generation must be prepared to tell the world that you believe in our country and our values. John Kennedy, I was 11 looking at him as he spoke in 1961, and he said, let us begin anew. Remember that civility is not a sign of weakness. Let us explore what problems unite us instead of belaboring those problems which divide us. And then his famous words, and so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny, dreams and values. Congratulations to the class of 2017. Congratulations to the class of 2017. Congratulations to the class of 2017.